Hello, everyone. My name is Rama. I'll be your host uh, for this afternoon. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that uh, some of you uh, were a little misled by the video. Uh, this session will be in English because I don't speak Chinese. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Just give me a moment. Uh, I am very happy to welcome you to this session this afternoon. It's a very warm day. I hope you're all feeling comfortable. Um, we are going to have, I think, a very exciting session uh, because I've had a I've had a preview uh, of the slides, uh, and I think it's going to be really very exciting. Um, we have a very good speaker today, uh, and I think that you will enjoy it very much. Uh, my name is Rama, uh, and I'm just going to give you a little introduction uh, to what's uh, already happened in this series. Uh, so before today, there have been four sessions, so there have been three sessions. Uh, the first one you can see there is rehabilitation for the bedridden elderly. The second is mobility issues in the elderly. The third, prevention of fall keeping uh, a safe environment. You can find all these on the MNCC website, actually. And today's session, um, Assistive Devices and Technology to Keep the Elderly Physically Able, uh, is actually a continuation uh, of the corporate responsibility, uh, co sorry, corporate social responsibility, CSR. I always think central sugar refinery, but CSR is corporate social uh, responsibility uh, of the Regen uh, Rehabilitation Hospital. Uh, so you can go and look at the others, um, but there's also more coming up uh, after today, which will be the aging of the spine, how to cope uh, and functions, and also swallowing issues uh, in the elderly. Uh, today's program uh, is a one hour program. Uh, we're admitting the participants now. I think that's pretty much done. I believe there are about, what, 24 of us right now on Zoom? I think so. Oh, no, sorry, we've gone up to 36. Uh, and of course, there are more on Facebook. Uh, the talk itself uh, will be for about 40 minutes. Uh, and that will include some, um, some live sessions uh, on, uh, on the web, uh, some some exposure to some of the things that will could assist in keeping. Uh, I have to say, I'm also one of the older folks um, to keep us alert uh, as we grow older. And then we'll have about 15 minutes of question and answer. Uh, for the, uh, the talk will basically be conducted in English. Um, and, and, you know, I, if it is conducted in any other language, like I said, I'll have a problem. But I think Mingzi probably won't have a problem, which is a, uh, I think you'll, you'll find it very flexible. Um, so the question and answer will be for about 15 minutes. And the way that's going to work, I'll just introduce you to that. Uh, first of all, uh, keep your microphone muted at all times. Um, and keep your video camera off so that we'll have a more stable internet connection for everyone. This session is being recorded. Uh, and your participation in this meeting basically implies that you've consented to the recording. Uh, however, since you will not be speaking and your video camera is off, uh, I don't think you need to worry too much uh, about that. Uh, you can type your questions in the chat box, which you can see circled uh, on there, you know, the, uh, on Zoom or in the Facebook live comment box. Uh, one word of caution, though. Please don't give personal information. You know, don't don't tell us anything that is part of your personal medical history or anything like that, or your address or phone number or anything of that sort. Okay. Um, now, there may be an occasion when you feel that you want to ask a question orally, although I don't recommend this. Uh, I, it, it would be far better if you just type the questions. But if you really feel that you need to say something, you can you can raise hand. Uh, and you do that by going to reactions and you can raise your hand. Uh, and if I permit you to, then you can just unmute and speak. Uh, but please do not speak for long. 
30 seconds to one minute uh, is, is all I think that uh, you should be speaking for. Right? Now, it's important uh, for us to say this. Um, these talks aim to raise public awareness and promote healthy living. But the information provided today does not replace a doctor's consultation. If you encounter any personal health problems, don't disclose it here to protect your confidentiality, but do consult uh, your doctor, okay? I already said that before. I've said it again, and now you've read it on the screen. So this is very important. Now, I have great joy in introducing you to our guest speaker. She's a lovely lady. I spoke to her yesterday. She graduated from UKM with a Bachelor of Occupational Therapy and Honors degree. She is a very dedicated and caring occupational therapist, about 10 years of experience uh, working mostly uh, with the uh, older folks, uh, the wiser folks, I would like to say, the more mature folks. Uh, and she's very interested in the area of rehabilitation, uh, geriatric and dementia care. I give you Ms. Mingzi. Over to you, Mingzi. I'll just stop sharing. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rama. Hello, everyone. I'm Lindsay. I'm the occupational therapist from Region Rehab Hospital. Let me share my screen over here. Okay, can everybody see my screen now? We can. Okay, so today I will be sharing about assistive devices and technology to keep elderly physically able. Okay, so what is assistive technology? According to WHO definition, assistive technology devices refers to those whose primary purpose is to maintain or to improve an individual's function and independence to facilitate participation and also to enhance the overall well-being. Assistive devices also refers to the external devices that are adapted or designed to assist a person to perform a particular task. So this can be applied in different situations, for example, like feeding, um, showering, toileting, grooming, performing household chores, as well as our day-to-day -day mobility, the ambulation part. Okay. So assistive technologies can prevent older adults from having to give up their activities that they enjoy doing every day and also to maintain their dignity and to live independently. So later on in my presentation, I, will, I have already categorized the assistive devices into a few areas, which includes the mobility assistive devices, the personal self-care assistive devices, safety assistive devices, and communication assistive devices. Okay, so the first one that we're going to talk about is mobility assistive devices. So mobility assistive devices, is, it helps older adults to get around more easily. Um, as we age or fall sick, our strength and balance gets affected. So with the assistive devices, it helps to improve and also to restore confidence, provide extra support for the elderly, so that allowing them to continue to perform their daily activities. So the mobility assistive devices, including, but are not limited to any of the walking aids that you can see, the wheelchairs, the motorized vehicles, or even the stair elevators. Okay, so before we go into the, going further to the assistive devices, do consult your therapist before you buy any of the assistive devices. And this is important because um, the therapist will assess the person uh, based on that, you know, how, how is the ambulation status, how is the balance, how is the gait pattern, how's the endurance of the person when they walk, then only they prescribe the suitable assistive devices. So generally, um, the selection of suitable devices depends on the person's endurance, the strength, the balance, the cognitive function, as well as the environmental demands of the person. Okay. Okay, so... Look at the photos over here. There are different types of walking aids that we can see in the um in the market as well as you know um, in the community. Yeah, so the first one over here is the walking frame. We call this walking frame, and the other one is the two wheels at the front. We call this orator frame. Then we also have walking stick, um, the quadruped with the four legs below. 
the elbow crutches and the axilla crutches. So if you notice that all these walking aids, they actually come with different height. It's height adjustable walking aids. So the therapist assess the person already, then they will decide, they will help you to adjust the, uh, the height of the walking aids. Usually we can see some of the patient they come in or the elderly they come in with the walking aids, but in the in a improper height. Yeah, so using the walking aids with improper height eventually will cause some posture problem, body alignment, and may cause back pain as well. So yeah, so if needed, you can consult a therapist for the suitable height adjustment for your walking aids. Okay. And these are different types of wheelchairs. Okay, so the most commonly seen one is the last photos over here. This is uh, what we call standard wheelchair. And it is the heavy kind that you can see in the hospital. So we call this standard wheelchair because the armrest and the footrest is non-detachable. And the detachable kind is this one. The next to this, uh, the, where the armrest and the footrest can be removed. Yeah, so this is helpful for those uh, for those elderly that requires more assistance in, in terms of transferring. Okay, then you can see the above the first two photos over here is called push chair. The difference between the push chair and the wheelchair is that the wheels. If you see the wheelchair, the wheels is bigger and it allows the person to self-propel themselves when they sit on the wheelchair. But when the person has a push chair, they will definitely need a carrier to push them around. Usually it's for long distance, for outdoor, yeah. And push chair is lighter than the wheelchair and easier for the family members to carry in and out of the car. And push chair also come with detachable or non-detachable function. So it depends on the needs of the person, lah. okay? And then the last photo over here is the reclining wheelchair. Uh, this wheelchair allows the person to recline to rest instead of compared to the push chair and the wheelchair where the, the back rest is unable to recline to the back, okay? So usually this type of um, wheelchair is more suitable to the person that are more, um, more sick, lah. yeah, or they, they don't have much head control or their blood pressure cannot, um, cannot sustain when they sit upright, they need to recline back a bit more, okay? So same thing, um, the therapist will prescribe the suitable uh, push chair or wheelchair to the person if needed, okay? And if you see outside in the market itself or in, in, in any other pharmacy, there are, there are many types of, many different models of wheelchair available. I also see like some of the push chair where the wheels is even smaller than the push chair over here. So like the four wheels is the same size, the small caster wheel size, that kind. Yeah, so it is very light, lah, but however, the stability of it is, affected as well. So if you if you use that kind of wheelchair in the community, if you are pushing on an uneven ground, uh, the, the, the flooring that is like, you know, for stone or sand, so sometimes the stability is not there. So just need to take note of that. Lah. Okay, then another tips of this is, um, okay, I'm not sure whether y'all can see this, the first photo over here, there is this small little uh, metal bar at the back, we call this anti tipper. Anti-tipper is important as well to prevent the chair from toppling backward. Yeah, so when the person age, right, sometimes when the, uh, their lower limb is weak, they will have, they will need a lot of strength to control their speed of sitting down on the chair. Yeah, so sometimes they will just like sit down impactful and then the chair will just topple back. Yeah, so with the anti-tipper, it can prevent the chair from toppling backward. Okay, so these are a few tips for you to take note when, if you want to buy any of the chairs outside. Okay, we move on to the next one, motorized vehicles. So we can see motorized scooter, motorized wheelchair, and also standing wheelchair over here. Has any one of you seen motorized scooter before in the community? Mm, to be honest, it's not uh, commonly seen over here in the community. Yeah, one of the reasons is because of the environment. Yeah, it's not so user-friendly. So, but I do see this in the shopping mall. So some of the shopping mall at the concierge there, uh, next to the stroller, they do have some, a few motorized scooters over there. So they can, they allow those like adults or elderly that they are unable to walk for long distance to use the motorized scooter in the shopping mall itself. Lah. Yeah. So compared to other country, like for example, in Singapore, you can see motorized scooter or motorized wheelchair in the community, um, more common, commonly used 
by the community there. One thing is because the environment over there is more user friendly to the scooter or, or motorized wheelchair user, where they can access to the MRT and the buses as well. Yeah, but of course, um, getting to use these motorized vehicles, uh, they will need some assessment from the therapist lah, to be safe. Yeah. And also the training will be done by the therapist to see whether it's safe for them to drive in the community or on the road itself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there are two types of stair lifts. One of it is the platform kind where you can actually position the whole wheelchair onto the platform and go and uh, ascend and descend the stairs. The other one is a, a seat kind where the person just sit on, onto the chair. So then it will ascend or descend the staircase. Okay, so all this, it, depend, it depends on the staircase in the house. So the vendor will go in and assess the home environment, the staircase, whether it's suitable to install for them or not the stair lift. Okay. Okay, we move on to personal or self-care assisted devices. For personal and self-care assisted devices, it helps older adults to accomplish daily hygiene and grooming tasks that maintains their dignity. So personal or self-care assisted devices refers to all of these. The first one is the long handle shoe horn. Yeah, so the long handle shoe horn, um, it, it allows the elderly to easily slip in the shoe. Not only, not only elderly, like anyone or else can use this long handle shoe horn as well. And then uh, the, the second one is zipper pulls. Um, some of the elderly, they do have some fine motor problems where they have difficulty to manipulate smaller items or they, uh, they have some numbness over the fingers, so it's difficult for them to, to, to use small items, or even those with arthritis, yeah, so the fingers joints is quite painful when they try to use it. Yeah, so with those um, elderly that has this, this kind of problems, it is very difficult for them to manipulate uh, small items like the button, the zip, or even using a new clipper. Yeah, so with, those, with these modified uh, modified items, it, it helps them a lot in their personal care activities. And long-handed sponge, um, this is the modified nail clipper that I said. Yeah, so um, the this one is button hook 8. So if you can see from this photo, it can it helps to button the small button. Yeah, instead of using struggling with your tip, you know, fingertips to button. Yeah, and the little hook at the back over here is for the zip. Okay, and then the front part is for the button. Okay. So with the modified tools, it allows them to carry out their personal uh, hygiene activities, maintain their independence in their day-to-day uh, -day activities. Okay, then we move on to safety-assisted devices. Safety-assisted devices reduce the risk of fall within the home, promote independence while performing daily living activities. So these safety-assisted devices refers to um, the grab bars, the shower chairs, the commode chair, and also non-skid mat. Okay, that we commonly use. Lah. Okay, so look at the photos over here. This is suction, uh, suction floor mat that we can use in bathroom. But using this suction floor mat, the, the, the things that you need to take note is that the dirt might accumulate below after some time. So when the dirt accumulated already, then the suction floor mat lose the suction function and you will need to replace it lah, or you need to wash it frequently. The other option is that you can uh, use this type of non-slip mat, the, the, the photo below, the grey colour one. Uh, it's like the puzzle kind that you can piece out. Yeah, but make sure that you cover the whole floor, whole flooring in the toilet or the bathroom. Yeah, sometimes they tell me, uh, no need, I just use two pieces enough. Yeah, I stand on it so that I can just stand on it to shower. But actually, if you put two or, or four pieces, it is still movable. So the risk of fall is still there. So it's the, the we, are, we are encouraged to put um, the, the, the mat uh, covering the whole flooring in the bathroom, okay? Then there are also grab bars, the vertical one, the horizontal one, or even the U-bar, that we call this U-bar, depending on the uh, available wall next to the toilet bowl, okay? So, it um, and the need of the person. Lah. This is the anti-skid tape. Um, anti-skid tape can use for uneven ground, like when whenever there is a step or there is a curb that you need to cross over or even staircase. So with the contrast and high contrast sensitivity, it allows the elderly to, to see the steps clearly to, so that to avoid them uh, having to miss the step or trip or voila, okay? 
All right, so this is shower chair. The first picture over here, there is uh, armrest support for the shower chair and the next one without the armrest. And both of these is height adjustable as well. So we can adjust the height according to the person needs. And this is wall mounted shower chair. So it depends on the space in the bathroom. If let's say, you know, sometimes it's quite small, not enough space to put another chair, can consider a wall mounted shower chair where you can actually fold up uh, fold out or flip out the, uh, the shower chair when you are not in use. And the bottom three pictures over here, they re we refer this as a commode chair. So commode chair, we come in two types, which is stationary one and also the mobile one. Um, stationary one and this mobile one, these two types, these two model is also height adjustable and foldable as well. Okay. And the last one, the black color over here is a mobile commode chair that is unable to be folded and the height is not adjustable. Lah. But all this commode chair is able to go over to the toilet bowl. Okay, yeah. So you can either put at the bedside or you want to go over the toilet bowl. So can can be different types of usage. Lah. Okay, we move on to the next one. Okay, so this is communication assisted devices. So communication assisted devices, it helps the people to see, hear, and speak. Yeah, so it includes hearing aids, magnifying glasses, on the loudspeaker function on the phone. Yeah, so sometimes you can see, you know, with loudspeaker, you can hear, hear better. Or the speed dial function. So the speed dial function allows the person, the elderly person especially, to save the trouble of having to go through the long contact list, to search for the person, or even, or even to remember the phone number of the family members. Yeah, so, so with the help of the young, younger generation people to set the speed dial function for them, it's easier for them to call, um, call out to the family members. Huh? And there is also this function of speech to text function. Yeah, so like my mom, she cannot use Han Yu Ping to type the Chinese word. So she used this speech to text to, to, to send message to us whenever she doesn't want to use the voice message. Yeah. And the video call. So when you can see face to face, then you can actually um, communicate better as well. And this is enlarged, uh, enlarged keyboard sticker. So replace on you can paste onto the, your keyboard, then easier for them to see the, the letters when they want to type the words. And one of the functions of the phone nowadays is that you can also choose your phone size. Yeah, so you choose the one that's comfortable to your, your reading size. Lah, okay, yeah, so these are the communication assistive devices. And okay, so then now I move on to some other assistive devices that um, mainly we can find in the kitchen. So I, I, I'm not too sure whether uh, have y'all seen this, this type of assistive devices before. So let, let's say, for example, um, the enlarged holder of the utensil. Yeah, so with the larger grip of the utensil, it's easier for the uh, for the elderly people who has problem in manipulating small items to feed themselves. Yeah, so with the enlarged grip, uh, we call this ergonomic utensil. Uh, so it's, it's um, easier for them to feed themselves and also not so strenuous for the hand to grip onto the spoon or even the knife. Okay, and this is the enlarged key holder. Yeah, so same thing goes to like, you know, small key is, is difficult to turn, uh, to, to open the padlock as well. Yeah, and over here, this is the modified chopping board. So this chopping board is a bit special where you can see that there's some nails on top. Yeah, so this is to stabilize the, the food. Like, for example, you want to cut the tomato. Okay, basically, this type of chopping board, we will prescribed to those um, that has only one side of the hand is strong. So let's say they have another side of the hand is weaker and they couldn't use both hands for the activities, then they will need this type of chopping board so that they can still go back to their daily routine of preparing, pre preparing their own meals, uh, cutting their own fruits. Yeah. So let's say with this, uh, this, this chopping board, they can poke the tomato onto the new, the new part and they can still slice tomato. Okay, or the cucumber, I see. Yeah, so this type of chopping board, they also come with a suction, uh, suction thing below so that the chopping board will not move lah, when you try to use it. Okay, yeah. So uh, these are a few uh, different type of assistive devices that we seldom see in the out there, lah, but usually what we will prescribe to the patient, yeah, depending on the condition. Okay, 
and other assistive technology, including like pill box and alarm. So as many as 75% of seniors, right, they, they don't take their medication because um, the main reason is that they just simply forget to take. Yeah. So with the pill box and also the uh, smart smartphone apps that have a reminder, yeah, they can set the reminder to remind themselves to take the medication. And the pill box, we can organize the pills for them so that uh, easier for them to know that, okay, this is for morning, this is for afternoon, this is for evening, all right? And smart lighting. So there's also this motion sensor light that we can install at the walkway, uh, especially at night when they want to get up to go to the toilet. Yeah, so sometimes you, you can hear them uh, telling you that, it's okay, I stayed here for 10 years already. I don't need to turn on the light. Also, I know my home environment. I know how to go to my toilet. But you know, the forest is there. Lah. Yeah, so with the motion sensor light then, when they walk past the, the walkway, then the light will turn on by themselves. Okay, okay. big sensor is more to, um, more to sending um, like, uh, like the carer to aware that, oh, this person is getting up from the bed especially at night. So when you're in deep sleep, so you, especially the carer at this, in deep sleep, they don't know that this, uh, the, the person that they care for get out from the bed to go to the toilet. Yeah, so with the bed sensor, it's sort of like letting them know that, okay, this person get out from the bed already. So you need to be there with them if they want to go to the toilet. Okay, yeah. And then under assistive technology, like um, there are many robot vacuum nowadays. Yeah, so sometimes you can tell your elderly parents that maybe you don't need to frequently vacuum or sweep the floor so much you can use the robot vacuum yeah although they will tell you maybe not as clean as how they do that yeah <laughs> but at least save some energy and also um maybe cordless vacuum yeah because with the with the wire with the cord it is that there is also the risk of fall when they trip over the cable lah. okay right so okay so before i move on to cognitive training apps um I sort of covered the assistive devices and technology already. Um, is any one of you have any question for the assistive device and technology? Yes, I think, uh, yeah, thank you. First of all, thank you very much. That was a very good presentation. I think everyone will agree that your slides are very informative. We've had several questions that have been posted uh, and also very good delivery. Um, so uh, we do have uh, several questions um, and uh, let me just, okay. There was a question about whether they can, uh, whether viewers can access uh, your presentation uh, and that's already been answered. Yes, it'll be available on the MNCC website. Um, but there's another question uh, that, okay. Uh, someone called Chun Ko asks, are all these kitchen assistive devices and others like key assistive devices available in Malaysia? Yeah, so these devices, um, if you search online, right, so sometimes you can see there are many still, um, you can find in um, Shopee, Lazada, all these. Yeah, or we even modify it ourselves, like in the, for the chopping board, we sometimes, we sometimes modify it ourselves for the patient. Yeah, so uh, we, can, we can always get it from uh, online stores, yeah. Mm. Um, so uh, there's, there's another question, uh, which is where can we buy these items? Example, zipper pull. Um, mm. But uh, I'd just like to add to that. Uh, and I'd like to say, you know, is there like a catalog that people can go and look at uh, of all these devices? Uh, can they like go online and see a catalog where such things are available? Or do they have to go and search individually on Lazada and so on? In Malaysia itself, we have to search it individually because for the catalog, mostly it's overseas one. Yeah. All right. And okay. um, yeah, sometimes the modification also done by our therapists ourselves. Yeah, like for example, the new clipper or this. Yeah, so we 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 just get the hard surface of the of a of a board, then we attach to it. Yeah, so we get them okay. to yeah practice using uh -huh. it. All right. Well, um, there's, there's another question, and I too had this question in my mind. Um, this question is, where can we go to check out the physical products before we buy these devices? And I can understand that question because some of these things are quite complex and probably expensive. So are there places they can go to to see them before they commit? Um, we do have some vendors selling these type of uh, products. 
Yeah, but to see it physically, um, you probably some of the hospital with the occupational therapy department, they do have this dem, uh, product demo, like not product demo, they do have these products in their department. So you can always ask the therapist to like show you or give you the contact of the vendor that um, do sell these items. Sometimes the vendor can, they can separately arrange with the family members yeah, to show them the products. Mm. Thank you. Um, okay, this, this is a, a, a rather um, specific question. I'll answer it if you can. Uh, can uh, this is from Serene. Uh, can you give me a reasonably priced contact for stair elevator with platform? I do have few contacts that, um, that do stair lift uh, for the house. Yeah, but the family members will own some liars the price with the uh -huh. contractor. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think that's probably something that, uh, you know, Serene, you could contact uh, Minzi separately. Uh, you, you can always uh, contact the hospital, I guess, uh, the center rather. Um, I don't see any other questions. Uh, I mean, there's a show, could, could you show an example of a bed sensor? Uh, I, I, I don't think you'll be able to show one, but could you just describe it? What is it like? Does it have wiring? Uh, is it remote? How does it, what does it look like? Yeah, so the big sensor that, um, okay, I just take example of the one that we use it in our ward, like previously, uh, for those that high for risk kind of patient. So when they, uh, it is something that they, they, they install on the bed there. So they sense it through the movement of the bed. Yeah, so let's say they get out from the bed already, then, then the alarm will ring. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so if I, if I might, uh, just, just explore that a little bit more. Uh, would it be something that you know has to be connected to the home Wi-Fi system, or, or how, how does it actually set off an alarm? And what kind of alarm does it go to a phone, or how does it work? No, I think it's a special device. So it, the device itself. So you don't need the Wi-Fi, but okay. you have to connect to the power plug, power point, so that yeah, the the device itself will, will have um sound the alarm. Okay. Mm. Okay, uh, there is uh, someone who is asking here, uh, can, can she have a, a contact, your contact, even an email is good. Uh, I'll, I'll, is that something you want to share or, or they can always contact through uh, MNCC, what do you prefer? Mm. How's the MNCC? Your, your contact. Uh, uh, probably yeah. email address. <laughs> yeah, an email address, okay. Uh, you could just direct yeah. message this person, I guess, on the chat. Mm, mm. Yeah. Okay, uh, if there are no further questions at this point, and I don't see any others at this point, uh, perhaps you could go on to your uh, the, the training part online. Mm. Okay, right. So I will move on to uh, the cognitive training online apps uh, slides. Okay. So there are a few examples of apps that you can find online or even download into your Android or the iOS um, devices. Yeah, so the Lumo City is one of the cognitive apps, Mentem, Fit Brain Trainer, and Cognitive Fit. There are many other cognitive apps as well. So I just list down a few here. And I will show um, maybe two of the apps. Yeah, some of the games that um, they, they, they have. Okay, so the first one is Lumo City over here. Okay, let me uh, click on to the link and stop share the screen here. Okay, can y'all see the Lumo City web page now? Yes, we can. Okay, so this is the Lumo City apps that you can uh, assess um, yourself and set up the account yourself. Yeah, so basically these Lumo City apps, right, it, uh, it has more than 50 types of games that um, allow us to play. Yeah, so this is the one. Okay, 
So for this numeracy, uh, it trains five cognitive functions, which includes the speed, the memory, the attention, the flexibility, as well as uh, problem solving. Yeah, so over here, cognitive training games. So there are different games in these apps that you can try out. Yeah, so um, once you sign up a new account, they actually have a fit test to try out with you. The fit test is to calibrate your speed, attention, and memory through three separate games. Then when you, once you complete the game, the fit test already, they will come up with the result that will show how is your result compared to those in the same age group as you. Okay, yeah. So because I already done the fit test, I couldn't show the games, but there are a few games over here that uh, you can see. Let's try um, today's game, uh, this mathematic one for raindrops. Okay, let's try this. But for this university, you need to, if you want to, to, the, to go to the premium one, you will have to subscribe them, lah. okay? Yeah, so let's say raindrops. Okay, they actually, they actually show you how to play as well. And then uh, once you know how to play already, you can play with the, you can get the person to play. Either you want to play with the elderly people together, or if let's say they are, uh, they, they know how to operate the apps or the, the, the website, then you can get them to do this. Huh? Okay, let's say I go to play. Yeah, so, oh, okay, there's tutorial. Yeah, they will tell you what to do. Yeah, and also, yeah, they make sure you know what to do first. Okay, let's say. And it tell you solve the problem in the sun to make all the raindrops disappear. So just make sure you solve the yellow one. Yeah. Okay, so this is how um one of the game. Lah. Yeah. And now it's the real one. So we get faster and faster and more questions at the same time as well. So it tests the person um attendance, uh, attention, sorry, yeah, and the speed. Can you show us what happens if you type a wrong answer? Sure. Then they will just think wrong like that. They will tell you it's wrong. Then the raindrops will continue to go down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's say uh yeah. Okay, so basically they will tell you uh this game um it's for the ability to like uh sustain your attention, your multitasking, because they come with subtraction, addition, multiplication, and division as well. Yeah, okay, this is one just one of the game. Okay, this is uh the Lumosity apps. <laughs> yeah. So can just sign up and try out the free. So let me add as okay. Let's say this uh another cognitive ads of my tem. Yeah, so this one you can, uh, so this, there are also many different games in, in, in these apps where uh, it works on the memory, attention, and special orientation as well. Yeah, so they are over here. Yeah, thinking, memory, special orientation, attention, imagination. Okay, so let's try out some game. So basically, every day when I log in, every when, when I try to go in every day, there are different games, lah. Yeah. Okay, play with words. Let's see what is this. The goal of the game is to put together as many words from the offered syllables. Okay. The, uh, one of the thing is because this country, like sometimes the words, you know, is not the one that we can understand. So let's see whether this is the. Mm. 
let me try the other one. Because uh. sometimes the, the, the words that they, they show is not the one that we, the English. Yeah. So there are different games where you can try. Hold on. Uh. So you just skip the one that is not in the English language one. Uh. Yeah. Can you still see the Mentem page here? Identify similar. So they, they will give you some instruction on how to play the game. And okay, let's try. Okay, remember the symbol. Okay, is this the same? Let's see. Okay, let's see. All right. So they they want us to follow back the previous one. So let's say now the blue one is the same as the previous blue one, but the red is different from the blue, right? So I put not the same. Yeah. Oops. Okay, not the same, not the same, same. Okay. Yeah, so it has the speed, the concentration and focus. Lah. Okay. Yeah. So that's how uh, yeah. So over here they will write training focus, the attention span, the ultra short term memory, and the speed. Okay, so they will tell you what they work on. Okay, I will stop share over here. And go back to the slides. Okay, so these are the two apps that I'm going to show. Lah. So you all can try out different cognitive apps. There are, there are a lot more out there, whether or not to subscribe. Yeah. Okay, so some other cognitive stimulation activities that uh, we commonly see is also like, you know, available out there, like Sudoku game, can, uh, provided that they understand the whole uh, concept. Then crossword puzzle, word search puzzle, spot the difference as well. Okay, so all these can um they can you can we can get these prepared like you know as worksheet that kind or you can go to the popular or bookstore to get the the whole book itself yeah but sometimes the book is quite small so they can't see the words lah. so you can just print it out like with a bigger font for them to easily see the the numbers or the word okay yeah so all these are the uh worksheet that you can use it with the elderly people to stimulate their cognitive function at their free time okay right. Okay, so as a summary, you know, as people age, the ability, the ability to live independently may decrease. Although the majority of seniors prefer to age in place, many will find that performing daily tasks and activities are challenging. So assistive devices increase a person's space of support, improve balance, and increase the activity and independence, allowing them to continue to perform their diffi difficult daily tasks and activities. Yep, so um, just a reminder to all, um, before you get any of the assistive devices, you can always get uh, you can always get the advice from your physiotherapist or the occupational therapist for advice so that you won't buy the wrong items or yeah get, uh, buy the wrong assistive device lah. Okay, yep. Um, so for people with disabilities, technology makes things possible. For people without disabilities, technology makes things easier. Okay, yeah. So with that, I um, end my presentation for today. Thank you very much, Mingzi. That was really fun. Thank you. Um, there are a few questions. Uh, let me let me put. Uh, there's a first. This uh, the first question I'll put to you is from someone uh, from Raihana. Uh, do these cognitive apps really help in improving? Uh, thank you. This is lovely. I have some great uh, assistance uh, in this in this work. Do these cognitive apps really help in improving cognition? Do studies show any significant benefits? Hmm. So usually cognitive apps, right, it helps to stimulate their cognitive function. But to, again, to apply, apply it back to their day-to-day -day function is another thing. So um, uh, cognitive activities is part of the uh, stimulation activities where they can do it um, at their free time. 
But in terms of day-to-day -day function, we still want them to come back to generalize the skills back to the daily function. Yeah, so of course, we will not base on the cognitive activities just to improve their cognitive function. Of course, something for them to occupy their mind rather than uh, they just watch TV, the sedentary kind of thing. Yeah, so something to stimulate them thinking to slow down the uh, mental deconditioning. Lah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, thank you. Could, could we have the next question? Yeah. Uh, what are the conditions that are suitable to use these apps? Um, you could give a general answer, I guess. Thank yeah. You. Anyone can use the apps. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think if I just expand on, on the answer to that question, I guess it depends on the individual uh, yeah. and also depends on their uh, technological uh, capability and what technology they have available and so on. Mm. So I think, you know, what you said earlier, it, it's a therapist who, who will uh, assess them and, and, and suggest, but I think they could also just, uh, if there are helpers here, I mean, they could mm. just go onto these websites uh, and, and try them out, right? I mean, would you yeah. like to just expand on that? So, so with the family members around, so sometimes they can just uh, do it together with their, the, 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 the elderly. If let's say they are not that, like English educated, some of the apps, you know, like English educated, they can understand, but they know how to, they know how to click onto the button. But for um for those that not educated one, they might have difficulties to um use the iPad, use the computer. Then they will need some help from the family members, lah. Yeah, and also the 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 level of the game. Sometimes it's it depends on the um cognitive function of the person. If let's say it's the severe, um let's say example severe dementia we will not expect them to be able to perform all these. Yeah, so it depends on how, uh, what is the level of them. Lah. Yeah, so it really, like, like Mr. Rama mentioned just now, um, get the therapist to assess, or you yourself, you know, the family members understand that, oh, uh, how, much, how much he or she can do. Yeah, then you can do together with them. Mm. Thank you, thank you. Mm. I think we have another queer. How frequently should we use the apps or cognitive stimulation activities? How frequently should you use the apps to cognitive stimulation? Okay. Um, how frequent? If let's say it's a normal, let's say uh, not normal, let's say it's just like 60, 70 years old, let's say they don't have anything that they can do at home or they got nothing much that if you if you see their lifestyle, they, they don't have much things that stimulate their their their, 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 their brain. Like for example, a housewife, there are a lot of things that they can occupy their mind. They need to know, okay, what should I cook for, for the dinner tonight? Yeah, what should I buy at grocery shopping? So these, they are still very active. They don't really need this type of cognitive stimulation activities daily or even they, or don't, don't even need it. Yeah, so if let's say they really, um, like nothing much that they can do at home or you realize that, eh, the, the memories like getting uh, affected, or it seems like a bit more quiet already. They don't really talk much or socialize with people. Then there are things, these, these people, then we need to start um, be aware. Yeah, like, you know, what what something wrong with them or what should we do already to help them to engage back to the community or socialize a bit more. Yeah, so the frequency of using it, we don't really like, you know, set the frequency, but as long as something to make them think if you are talking to them every day, yeah, then it's also a simulation as well. Yeah. So I'm going to be a bit naughty. I'm going to be a bit naughty. Does anybody get addicted to this? So far, not really. Okay. There is another question uh, that I see here. Uh, yeah. Should the elderly start using the apps before they start to show signs of dementia and so on? Mm, I mean, yeah, what, so who like, is the elderly? What would you, what, what, what would you consider someone who is elderly? Elderly, <laughs> generally, is sixty-five years, sixty-five years old and above. But <laughs> however, okay, uh, do do note that not all the elderly will get dementia eventually. So it's not um not really related kind. Yeah, of course, yes. When we age, our memory may get affected slightly. Yeah, however, um. When, like I said, you know, when do you think they should start using the apps? It really depends on how active this person is. 
if they every day go out, you know, you know, you know, they, they, they go out jogging, they go out walking with the friends together, then go copy down to have breakfast together, social skills are so good. I don't think they really need the stimulation apps. Lah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Um there is one more. Does any of these help Parkinson? Yeah, there you go. Parkinson patients. So is this refer to Parkinson's patient that has cognitive problem already? Yeah, because usually Parkinson patient they start off with a uh, physical problem uh, more affected first. Then of course their cognitive function also get affected as well. So of course if let's say the cognitive function get affected and they have problem with this type of like memory attention, of course you can you can you can have these cognitive games to uh play with them so that they are they engage in some of the cognitive stimulation activities rather than just sit there or just watch TV or sleep. Yeah. Thank you. Ah, another question. Is there any recommended assistive device for patient transfer? Very good question. Since caregivers with physical strain is very common. Hmm. Yeah, so it depends on um, the level of assistance of the person. Let's say uh, if this patient need, like let's say this patient totally um, dependent, they cannot even help out during the transfer, then it rely on the caregiver 100%. Uh, usually therapists will think of a way like either getting a transfer board or transfer belt or even a hoist to help out with the transfer. So it depends on the level of functional status of the particular person, then we can uh, choose a suitable device for the for the patient yeah so i mean it's quite difficult to tell you which device because we we, uh, we need to assess the patient and see yeah which is suitable for them if let's say it's not totally dependent and they can help out like 50 percent also uh, there are also techniques that we will teach mm. the carer mm. thank you thank you this and thank you siti raima for that question um just an interesting uh, comment here uh from serene you can get addicted. It's just like playing computer games. Don't have to be too old to start playing. <laughs> so they can be hobbies. Yeah, I think yeah, we would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, question eight. Um, for the assistive devices, is there any financial aid provided by government sector or private sector to patients to purchase or to rent them? Good question. Mm. In Malaysia, I, there is no financial aid provided by the government for that, lah, but uh, to rent them, yes, there are some organizations, some some vendors they do rent out some of the assistive devices. Yeah, like you know, um, like the bed, the wheelchair, they, they do rent out. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I guess again, it would depend on where uh, the people are and uh, you know what's available in that area and so on, and and the needs of the of the patient. Oh yeah. oh yeah yeah one of the government sector the SOXO yeah so it depends on whether you you apply to SOXO whether it's approved or not so all these have to find out whether it, it gets approval or not lah. okay mm. so okay. these have to find out separately mm. thank you um yeah someone uh, Chunko says some rotary clubs do provide financial aids or devices yeah um I don't see any more questions and uh, I see the thank you up there. So I guess we don't have any more questions. Thank you so much, um, Mingzi. That, that was really, uh, I, my prediction was correct. This was a great, uh, a great talk. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it just now remains for me to say a few closing remarks. Um, so uh, like, like we said earlier, uh, the a recording and an ebook of this talk will be available uh, at the MNCC website, uh, and you can see the address there. It's a doc, .org address, uh, and, and it'll be there in one to two weeks' time. Uh, you can also, you know, now we scan everything, right? So you can also scan this. Uh, you can scan this QR code to give feedback. Uh, we always like to hear feedback. And there's the um, the uh, online uh, rehab health talk series. There's another one coming up, episode five. Uh, and that's the aging spine, how to cope and, and how to remain functioning. Uh, you can also like and follow the Facebook page. Um, also, uh, MNCC does have plans to organize physical training courses uh, uh, to train caregivers in handling patients. Uh, so 
if anyone would be interested, uh, you can always just you know put a note here uh, or uh, on the Facebook page. Uh, the Facebook page, of course, is there all the time, so you can you can go there and answer it, uh, or you can just put a quick note here while we're still on. Um, I think that about wraps it all up. Uh, thank you so much. Special thanks. You know, it's one of these problems with uh, with doing these things online. We really cannot give you the applause that you deserve. Thank you so much, Mingzi. It's been a great afternoon. Thank you. A lot of yeah, people's yeah. care is going to improve thanks to you. All right, everyone. We wish you a, a good rest of the day. Thanks again for joining us. Bye.